Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're talking about the new Chanel Holiday 2023 collection. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. A couple days ago, we did a Will I Buy It where we talk about new and upcoming releases and we talked explicitly about holiday releases. Now, I held off on talking about the Chanel holiday collection because I saw that some people have already purchased this in the States at certain boutiques, but this is not available online. And I was confused, I was concerned because Chanel is notorious for allegedly having accounts removed on Instagram for releasing photos too soon, even though the phone call always comes from within the house. Anyway, I've seen a lot of people talk about it, so I'm going to go ahead and um, talk about it today. I do have a backup account on Instagram, so I'm going to go ahead and link both of my accounts, my main account and my backup account, just in case. Anyway, this is the new holiday release. Somehow it's available in boutiques, in certain stores, but not online, certainly not here in Canada. I was told that this is going to be available in store early November. Now, if memory suits me or serves me, usually the holiday releases come out mid to late October. So I have no idea what's happening. I don't understand why the releases are staggered like this. This is not normal. I used to work for Chanel, if you're not aware, and we would always we would often receive the collections before the release date. But we were told explicitly you are not allowed to sell it until this date. They were embargoes etc. So I don't know why certain places are allowed to sell the releases before a certain date. I have no idea. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and talk about it because that's the hot button issue these days. So this is inspired by Paris in the 1920s. It looks beautiful. If we just look at this, you know, I'm thinking jazz. I'm thinking the very romantic, romanticized idea of Paris in the 1920s. The flappers, definitely dreamy and iconic, and it's very Coco Chanel, very Chanel. It's going back deep in the house. You know, they're going back into their own repertoire, their own history. They're sort of not recycling, but they're going back to its roots. Coco Chanel came out with her signature fragrance in the 1920s, So, and she was a flapper. Very, She was very 1920s in Paris. So it's uh, it makes sense that this is the inspiration. I'm really interested to see what type of perfume ads they'll do for this. I hope that it's related to the to Paris in the 1920s, but probably not. Probably something about the moon again. Anyway, we have here like this photo. I think is really pretty, and I sort of saw some sneak peeks online, but I didn't want to snuck it too soon. And I saw this, and I was. So happy. This makes my heart go pitter patter. First of all, this makes me think of Peter Phillips. Ugh, this is so Peter Phillips because we have not seen one of these five shadow palettes for the holidays in years. It's been years, you guys. When was it? Like 2015, maybe the last time one of these came out? It's been a long time. And these used to come out, well, every year for several years. And then they stopped making these for the holidays. And I'm just so happy to see this, not only because it's reminiscent to me of Peter Phillips, but also it actually looks slightly cool toned. There's not a single hideous, garish, warm red eyeshadow in here. Ha! Ah, perhaps they've listened to me complain for several years and have decided to make something special for me. No. But anyway, this is called Lumière Graphique 5 Couleur Eyeshadow. So the sequin designed embossing includes the shades Platinum Beige, Bronze, Shimmering Black, Rose Gold, and Brilliant White. So it's very shimmering, sparkling, dazzling, jazz, jazz hands, sequins, flapper dress, etc. I don't think that there's a matte in here, but we'll touch on that in a second. It's very pretty. It's giving me sequins. The embossing, the detailing in the background looks like sequins. That's what it makes me think of. And it made me think of this palette here, uh, Très de Caractère, this was 2018, I think. This is what I'm wearing today. This is, I think this is the last 
2018 was the last time we saw one of these five shadow palettes from the brand and I loved it. I created so many videos and so many looks with it and that's what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing one, two, three, four, those four colors here. So I saw that and made me think of this, gave me good memories, super exciting. Now if we switch over, so um, side note, I am actually using several different blogs for today's video and they're all listed down below like they always are for the Will I Buy It's. So if you wanna see who I'm talking about, just go ahead and look in the description box. Everything that I'm wearing is also listed there as well. Now, if we switch over to this account here, the first account was a Mitt Beauty Talk. This account here is Beauty Lux E, and she already has, she's in the States, she has this palette here, the five shadow palette, and she has done comparisons. So let's go ahead and look at that. So she compared it right away to the number five quad, which I believe was last year's holiday release. This one here, where everything was number five inspired, like looks like little number five bottles, the number five, etc. This palette here is very pretty, very classic, but also very shimmery, very satiny. And so Eka did a swatch comparison of this one here and the new palette, because at first when you look at it, it does look quite similar. I did a poll on Instagram a couple day, days ago saying, should I get the new one? And a lot of you voted no, and I get that. But Eka went ahead and just swatched them side by side. So we can see that the new palette here, although it's going to be very shimmery, it looks more satiny. If we look at the first three specifically of the number five quad, it looks more like a chunky glitter. And I have to say, it is very sparkly. It is very glittery. It's number five. It's very holiday, like New Year's Eve sparkle. Whereas the new five shadow palette looks a bit more muted. It's still very sparkly, but more satiny, if that makes sense. There is, I think, well, there's five shades instead of four. They do look very similar, let's be honest. I mean, the first four look like cousins, not twin sisters at all, but like first cousins that look alike. And then you do get that extra last color there at the, at the back that I certainly hope will be more like a taupey, cool shade, but I really like the finish of the first three. They just look a bit more buttery. And Eka did say that the new palette here, the formula is better. She said that it's a better formula, which makes sense because the first one, the number five, was just like, let's be honest, it could be quite glittery. And you know, a, a chunky glittery mess is definitely not for the typical Chanel client. I remember when I was at the counter, I was in like my mid to late 20s and there was literally, I think I had like one single client who was my age. Everyone else was decades older. So if you're in your 50s, 60s and 70s, a chunky glitter eyeshadow is probably not your favorite. Let's be frank. Now, I also wanted to mention a couple other palettes here. So I also have a photo here from the account called uh, Mademoiselle Chica. She has it here and she just has a, another photo here. And like, I think this is natural light and it's just a different angle of the palette. It looks pretty. At first, I couldn't tell if the embossing was feathers. I don't know why I thought it was feathers. It's not feathers. It looks like a sequin flapper dress. So pretty, Ugh, it does look very tempting. And I wanted to mention, I when I saw this, it made my makeup mind, my makeup spidey sense percolate and it reminded me of previous holiday releases um, from the brand. And I remember this palette here from 2016, that's what it made me think of, this 2016 holiday release. It was platinum, it was cool toned, and it was blue. Sadly, I do not have this one, tragically. I wish I did, but it's, it's so pretty. And it made me think of this one because at first from the photos, I thought it would be the new one coming out. I thought maybe it'd be even more cool toned more silvery, it is silvery, but it's more almost neutral leaning with some cool, in my opinion, it could be even cooler. But it made me think of this 2016 release here. That one's really pretty. It made me think of this 2015 fall palette. And this is from the blog from Omor Omorphia. She's here in Montreal as well. And this was a fall palette and it was, I think more Celtic inspired, but it was so beautiful. 
And I just miss the five shadow palettes. They were just festive. It was usually fall or winter and it was Peter Phillips and it was just something special about it. And a little bit of this color story does remind me of this new palette here. Just if you sort of squint really quickly, um, because there's not really much pink. I think one was called rose something, but it doesn't really look that rosy. But if you sort of squint really quickly and you look fast, you can sort of see some, some, some similarities, not much. The first one here, the 2015 fall one, was much warmer. It was really, really pretty. That one sold so fast. Uh, so gorgeous, but yeah, it made me think of that. So I was just like, oh, made me sort of like my makeup museum mind sort of started uh, brewing when I saw that. So, uh, okay, let's move on to the next item here. Oh, okay, the, the Duo Poudre Lumière Highlighter, shades of pink champagne and crystal white. It's so pretty. It looks like sequins, and then it looks like the sequins are just sort of dropping from the sky, like, ugh. It's so pretty. So this is a highlighter. Yeah, it's so funny when brands come out with like the most long-winded names, but it's like, it's a highlighter. That's what it is. And what I took a photo somewhere because I saw that and it made me think of something. Oh, it made me think of this blush from 2016. This is also from Omorphia. And it made me think of this blush for some reason. Very different, that blush was, it's a blush highlighter, it's beautiful. And it looks like a Chanel pearl necklace. Definitely not the same, but it just made me think of this one here. It's very, very pretty. So this is a duo. So there's a top and the bottom, and you could use these separately. You could swatch each one individually, or you could mix them together. I am one to just take my brush and just like go in there and wreck it and enjoy it because I buy nice things to enjoy them. But I understand if you want to preserve your makeup museum, it's your money, do whatever you want with it. So this is supposed to be shades of champagne pink and crystal white. Hmm. Hopefully it's not too stark white. So back over to Beauty Lux E. She did some comparisons of this one here and then the highlighter from last year from the holiday release and then the Duo de Camellia. That one came out years ago. I think it was an online exclusive only. And that one was, I have it somewhere, hold on. So exhibit A of me going in with my brush and just wrecking it completely. So one side was gold, one side was silver. Um, I obviously just smushed everything around. So, so beautiful. Like a really intense highlighter, like more intense than I'm wearing today, but so, so pretty. And so Eka compared that one and then also last year's number five which i also have i think i have the same one here it was like the ah uh, rose like the slight pinky one i'll show you this one but i wanted to show you the first highlighter here because it's a duo which is similar to the new holiday one so i think she's used this one more because mine looks a little bit more pristine but you can see that i do enjoy it so this one's a really nice champagne rose gold so Eka did what I said, like, you know, swiping them individually and then mixing them together. I think together is prettiest. It's interesting. It doesn't, what's it? It's supposed to be a champagne, a pink champagne with crystal white. It's, I guess the, the white one is very crystal white if you leave it on its own. I think mixed together is prettier. And then the Duo de Camellia, you can see it's very intense. It's very blinding, but super pretty. And then the Or Rose, I mean, they're really not similar to anything there. The Duo de Lumière, super pretty, very, very, very gorgeous. Um, okay, what else do we have? We have these lipsticks here. These are the Rouge Allure Extra lipsticks, I believe. Okay, so there's two that are existing. There is 812 Beige Brut, uh, 854 Rouge Puissant. The first two already exist. And the last two, 857 Midnight Red and then 867 Rolling Purple, those are two limited edition. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Rouge Allure Extra. I like them. I have a couple. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I wore them. I bought them when they came out. They're just not my favorite. I find them, they're fine. I think when they came out, they came out with way too many dark, warm reds. That's it. I just haven't seen enough nuance. That's the word. I was going to say nuisance. No, not enough nuance. I want more pinks, more neutrals, just 
berries even, but just stay away from the warm dark reds. And I feel like that's all they've done with this range. So this line of lipsticks really hasn't been for me, but I know Eka got a couple of them. So, so she got Beige Brut, which is one of the regular colors, and Roaring Purple. I think Roaring Purple looks really pretty. I like the name Roaring, like Roaring Twenties. I, I like the dark purpley plum for holiday. I think it's very on point. So that one's limited edition. And then she also has the 91 Fancy Prune. So that is another part of this collection here. This is the liquid lipstick, the Rouge Allure Lac. Also not lip products that I'm a huge fan of. I think again when they came out at the shade range just wasn't for me and I think it's the texture like I like them but I don't love them even though I have a couple of them I never reach for them so the first one here 90 golden beige a coral with delicate gold pearl and 91 a fancy prune a, a metallic plum I'm I don't see that it's limited edition but I would guess that it is limited edition because they do that with a lot of lip products I think that the fancy prune is very pretty it's so dark it's giving rouge noir i think if i was going to get a lip color i would get 91 fancy prune i just think it looks really pretty very very vampy very holiday but to be honest they those lip formulas are not my jam i don't know what it is exactly is it too creamy too gloss i like a gloss but there's something about that formula it's just meh, meh doesn't really work for me. And now let's hold on a second because there's also going to be some nail polish here. It says here that there will be three new colors for the holiday release. I'm guessing that all three will be limited edition as well. We have 167 white silk, a milky white, 169 tuxedo golden bronze, and 171 sequin, bright and stylish shiny black color. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we only see one nail polish here in this uh, sneak peek category here. And I th I'm guessing, this is an educated guess, but I'm guessing it's the 171 sequin, bright and stylish, shiny black color. In that photo, it almost looks blue. I would have guessed that that was a super dark navy with like a silver fleck, like a silver reflection, a silver shift, and that to me is also extremely Peter Phillips. He came out with so many wonderful, gorgeous, dark nail colors that had that little shift in them that just sort of gave you a little bit of oomph. So I'm guessing that's sequined there. The white silk, milky white, listen, I love a white manicure. I love white nail polish. I wonder how different this will be from some of the other ones. Like I like a white, like I want it to look like I used white out in middle school, stark white. Okay, I don't want, I don't like, a pearlescent shift on me so i am intrigued to see how opaque it will be and then the 169 tuxedo golden bronze honestly that's probably not for me golden bronze now polishes typically are not for me so it's probably not going to call my name i can just sort of guess right away now will i buy it will i get this collection i'm I mean, I think so. I think it's a pretty big wee for me. I'm not getting everything. I would get the eyeshadow and the highlighter. Those are the two items that to me stuck out the most from any sneak peek or promo photo that I saw. Those are the two that resonated with me personally. Uh, I think they're very pretty and I am hopeful knowing that the formula is better than um, the number five eyeshadow because I don't want to get the exact same palette twice. It's kind of pointless. It does look very pretty though. Mm. And I love that it's a five shadow palette. I love that it's just, it's so Peter Phillips. I think that the highlighter looks very pretty. However, I have recently purchased the new Tom Ford Soleil Neige highlighter that I'm wearing now. It's so pretty, it's so buttery, it's so smooth. And I'm not convinced that this one here is more smooth and silky. Like it looks nice, it looks very pretty, but is it better than my Tom Ford Soleil Neige? I guess I can buy it to review it to see if that's the case. I just think that it's funny because I'm typically not a highlighter girl. However, 
I think that tide is slowly shifting because I just bought this one and I'm in love with it. So I think this is my new standard for highlighters. So I'm curious to see if this will be just as good because there are some great Chanel highlighters out there. Don't get me wrong, but there are some times when it's like kind of chalky and like sort of sits on your face and emphasizes textures, which is uh, no merci. As far as the lip colors go, to be honest, I think um, all six of the lip colors, the Rouge Allure Lac, or no, the Rouge Allure Extra Lipsticks, no merci. The Rouge Allure Lac, mm, no merci. Unless, unless the prune one is like super pretty, because the prune one does look super nice, but probably no merci. And then the nail polish, I'll see. I have a lot of nail polish, to be honest. I do, but this looks pretty. Peut-être, maybe. Mm. So yeah, uh, I hope that added to the confusion. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. I hope it added some information. I know that some of you have already decided and made your list, checked it twice about what you're going to get. If you're going to order this with a salesperson, I would get in touch, make sure your name is on the list, reserved, ready to go. I have no idea when this is coming out online. Give me a second, I'm gonna look at my channel to see when I typically talk about holiday re or holiday releases. I think it's usually in mid-October. Hmm. But there have been times that I've been traveling and it was later in November. Okay, so last year for 2022, do I have a date? So last year I talked about the holiday release November 12th, which seems, honestly, it's really early, but in the world of this, it's super late. 2021, I talked about it October 15th, a whole month earlier, the year before. I, mm. So if you want this, and then 2020, I talked about it in early November. Mm. 2019, when did I do that? early or mid-November in 2019. Honestly, I would say mid-October to early November, your guess is as good as mine. If you're going to be buying online, I truly have no idea when it's coming out. I would mid-October to early November. If you want to just keep uh, refreshing uh, Chanel, I'm going to go ahead and type in Chanel Makeup Canada to see if there's anything new there, but drum roll please. No, it's not there yet. If I look on the website, it still features the fall winter collection, like the Equinox collection, the loose eyeshadows, which makes sense because it's literally just barely October. So yeah, that is today's video. Let me know what you think. I'm sure you have lots of opinions, lots of thoughts. What do you think of the five shadow palette? Are you happy to see these again? Do you see Peter Phillips in this? Do you like the color story? Do you think it's too close to last year's palette? Are you intrigued by the new formulation? What do you think of the highlighter? What do you think of the lip products? What do you think of the nail polish that we saw? Sound off down below. Now, if you're not aware, like I said, I used to work for Chanel. I don't work for them anymore, but I have a wealth of information about the brand and I have a new series on my channel called Ask a Chanel Expert, where I basically break down a lot of information about the brand. It's a new series. So if you have more questions about the brand, sound off in the comments below. Make sure you are subscribed, double check, and make sure your notification bell is set to on because a lot of you have been recently unsubscribed or you haven't been getting notifications, so make sure that that's all set in order. Okay, I think that's it. That is today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.